the London Guardian did pick up on it. Why didn't CNN's international arm air its own documentary on Bahrain's Arab Spring repression? And this is what she exposed, and we're going to her right now. This incredible whistleblower, because it's, it's hard to have moral courage. Many a historian and psychologist has, has pointed out physical courage is more common, charging a machine gun nest, than moral courage to say no to, to peer pressure. And she worked inside trying to get her evidence of just killing, shootings, beating to death, you name it, backed by Saudi Arabia. And she was told it's not going to air. Meanwhile, again, they exaggerate the atrocities of Assad, who I'm not defending in Syria, while covering up for Al-Qaeda, throwing Christians off the tops of churches, blowing churches up, and making fathers suicide bomb or they'll kill their family. This is how reprobate and corrupt we become. And this lady from inside, this is a big deal, exposed it. Uh, and she said, quote, I saw firsthand that these regime claims were lies, and I couldn't believe CNN was making me put what I knew was government lies into my reporting. Amber Lyon. Now, 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 now many people, when they run into the truth and get knocked over by it, Churchill said this, they get knocked over the ditch, uh, the ditch by the truth, they get up and dust themselves off and go on about their business. But exceptional individuals don't. And, and, and a lot of you are saying, well, she just told the truth. What's exceptional about that? Well, she basically had to leave CNN. She quit over it. She gave up a big career for her honor, for doing the right thing. And it's women like her and men like her that are the difference between civilization and barbarism, the jungle of tyranny and letting evil take over and freedom and liberty. And so she's my hero. And uh, Amber Lyon, you join us now. Thank you so much for coming on today. Hey, thank you, Alex, so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. That was uh, one hell of an intro. <laughs> well, hey, you deserve it. We need to rediscover what, who heroes are. Tell us your story uh, in a nutshell and yeah. what's happened since, and then we'll flesh the story out more for people. Well, well, basically, we went to Bahrain to do a documentary on, on the Arab Spring. And while we were there, we uncovered uh, atrocious human rights abuses at the hands of this regime. Um, and we were able to witness doctors who were being tortured, uh, also journalists. And so when we got back to the U.S., we were violently detained when we were in Bahrain as well. And the security forces thought that they'd erased all of our video. So you can imagine Bahrain's surprise when... We got back to the U.S. and actually had that video. We were able to sneak it out and then went on the airwaves telling everyone that this U.S. ally country actually is committing horrific human rights abuses against its people and pro-democracy protesters. Uh, at first, I was able to get coverage on CNN and CNN International, uh, but then the phone calls started coming in, uh, phone calls from PR companies working for the Bahrain regime, PR companies based in the U.S., also phone calls from the regime itself, constantly calling and complaining about me. I'd, I'd walk into the newsroom and producers would tell me, you know, uh, Bahrain called to complain about you again. And, and that was okay. But what happened is I started to notice the complaints being reflected in my reporting. And that's that I was required to then put on mandatory tags that were provided by the government, which were essentially just pretty much propaganda statements that I knew were false. And, and CNN calls that journalism 101. I call that propaganda 101. It's, it's very dangerous to repeat phrases over and over and over to the public. Yeah, that'd be like saying, hey, you can't say Hitler's bad in 1945. Let's get a statement from him. Yeah, or, or, yeah, or, or yeah. Hey, you can't say this convicted child molester did this, even though he's convicted. Let's get a statement from him about why he murdered the five-year-old. And, and, you know, there, there's a psychological effect. I, I, speak, I spoke with a lot of my friends who are, have studied, uh, one who has a doctorate in psychology, and there's a psychological effect to hearing something repeated over and over and over that no matter how insane it is, you, you tend to then uh, take it as truth. And, and that's true if, if you remember weapons of mass destruction. That phrase was repeated an infinite number of times within the media, and that instilled fear in, into the American Buzzword public. Buzzword conditioning, okay. absolutely. So they start pressuring you, they start making you... You know, you've got the video, you've got the interviews, you've got the proof. Yeah. Other other media outside the U.S. is reporting. They're lining people up and shooting them. But here it's like Bahrain is loving and helping, and it got some nasty protesters off the street. 
Well, and, and, and in this situation, too, you have to look at the at the foreign policy implications of my reporting, Alex. We have a naval base right now in Bahrain that is giving us access to the Strait of Hormuz, which is essentially where the U.S. wants to be right now in its its potential future escalations uh, with Iran. So, so the U.S. government doesn't want the U.S. media to report negatively on Bahrain because your tax dollars are going directly to empower and enable this regime. Not only that, we've sold more than a billion dollars worth of weapons to Bahrain, weapons that they are using right now to systematically tear gas and suffocate their people and fill their bodies with, with birdshot. Um, so well, I want to go through the cover up and what happened to yeah. you, but what is it like to watch Anderson Cooper, who's admittedly CIA, it's come out in the Washington Post, I'm sure you know this, 12 years ago, that the CIA does have top generals there literally saying what can and can't go off CNN. That's come out for uh, before for, for uh, people that don't know. You can elaborate on that if you have anything else. But what's it like to watch Anderson Cooper? get all breathless about Egypt or breathless about Libya and oh, oh, the human rights abuses and, and then exaggerate a bunch of stuff as he's been caught or flat out stage things. Meanwhile, you're told to not report on known massacres. Yeah, I, I think for me, it's frustrating journalistically and it scares me for the future of the survival of journalism's sake. Because as journalists, we can't pick and choose when or when not to tell the truth. We always have to be truth seekers and trying to expose the truth on, on every level. And, and eventually when I was at, uh, when I was at CNN, eventually it got almost impossible to get stories on about Bahrain. And then in June, our documentary, uh, the 20 minutes of it was a pretty stark report on, on the abuse in Bahrain. It aired in the U.S. for one day, but it never aired to its target audience, and that's on CNN International in Bahrain. And Alex, I started getting uh, employees at CNN, longtime employees approaching me saying, you should investigate this. This is very suspicious. Something's going on here. And we found out that, um, which was really, I, I felt defrauded as a journalist. We found out that at the same time I was being detained and risking my life to expose the Bahrain regime, CNN International is taking money from them in exchange for producing content that it airs on CNN International, content disguised as news. I mean, one of these programs, the reporter, uh, Richard Quest, was reporting live from Bahrain for a week and uh, on a program called ILIS. And that program uh, made Bahrain seem progressive. And, and like the, the crown prince was a reformer. And, and as an employee at CNN, I was never told that this was going on. Also, viewers are not being told that CNN is being paid by state regimes, some with horrific human rights records, to air content disguised it as news, which they're often not even telling Incredible. The, the viewers that this content was paid for by governments. And Alex, on a journalistic level, this is horrific. It is. Stay there. Stay yeah. there. We're going to go to break and come back. I want you to, to have the floor and break all this down. For people that don't know, uh, it, it's like the federal government's paying all the major sitcoms, all the major ones on the networks, to promote Obamacare, anti-gun messages. It never ends. And yes, the communist Chinese governments are also financing the news. We'll be right back. Alex Jones here with a very important announcement for Truth Seekers. We've carried a lot of amazing films and books over the years on the online video bookstore at Infowars.com. And out of all the titles we've carried, one stands out because it is just so chillingly convincing. And that's Dreams from My Real Father by Joel Gilbert, available at Infowars.com. This film exposes the fraud that Obama is like nothing I've seen. If you want to know who Obama's real daddy is, this is the film for you. Don't forget, your purchase supports our broadcast and our growing media network. You'll also find at InfoWarsShop.com, None Dare Call a Conspiracy by Gary Allen, the book that woke me up. We're also carrying Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21 by Rosa Corey. This book is coffin nails to the globalist takeover. The Greater Good, the most professional and up-to-date film I've ever seen exposing the scourge that is vaccines. These titles and a lot more are all available at InfoWarsShop.com. I hope listeners realize the magnitude of what we're discussing. This is a CNN insider. I didn't even get to her bio because it's, it's I mean, I'm literally catching my breath. This is so upsetting. 
to know all this, but to know the public isn't aware of it. Most of this is even hidden in the back of the newspaper. That foreign corporations, foreign governments, it's not just CNN. In fact, some are even worse, are just financed by foreign interest and are lying to people. Um, Amber Lyon is a three-time Emmy Award-winning journalist who scuba dived under the oil spills, goes to all these war zones. I was calling her a hero and all that. That's why I was saying that, not just her whistleblowing. Uh, it's just amazing uh, that uh, that you know she's willing to do this because most people will sell out for money and fame. Uh, and she's won all these big awards. I'm not going to get into it, but in 0708, she won the Emmy for Best On Camera Talent Reporter. And uh, she joins us now. Uh, and it's AmberLionLive.com, AmberLionLive.com. Okay, this is a short segment, Amber, long segment coming up. You were getting up to the fact that Bahrain, you're not told this while you're being pressured to whitewash. Bahrain, it's machine gunning and killing peaceful protesters. Uh, while our media demonizes other regimes as a pretext to bomb them, you're not being told that Bahrain is financing other shows while not letting your show air. Yeah, exactly. I wasn't, um, and I and I feel like CNN should issue an apology uh, to its journalists, also to uh, to to its viewers, because they're not making people adequately aware and clearly disclosing that they're taking money. And it's not just Bahrain, it's Georgia, Kazakhstan, um, and, and other regimes. Uh, they're taking money from these regimes in exchange for creating what they called sponsored content. But if you take a look at this content, it's very rosy. Like the, uh, the Bahrain page talked about pearl diving in Bahrain and how Bahrain was progressive. Um, and and at the same time, human rights workers and, and journalists were being tortured and, and imprisoned. And that wasn't mentioned on this page. Um, and, and I think this is really scary uh, because the U.S. public is being misinformed by, by such a powerful network. Not only that, the, the, the world, because CNN International is the most viewed English language news station in, in this area, Alex. I, I know the ratings have been going down, but... You know, we're talking Time Warner here. They have they have a lot of power. And, well, and sure, think, let me correct yeah. myself. Domestically, they, the, CNN is more and more a shadow of its former yeah. self. But you're right. Globally, it is the name reaching hundreds of millions. That's the real the real value inside CNN. And, and that's the global network that is the one that's that just taking this money from governments in exchange for sponsored content. I don't know where we lost our way journalistically in, in this country, in this world. To think that that's okay. Uh, I want to get into what you really saw overseas and everything in the next yeah. long segment coming up. But what heat have you gotten since you went public? Talk about that decision to leave CNN and what's happened since then. Well, I, I was uh, forced out of CNN because they, they shut down our domestic um, investigative and documentary unit. So about 60 people were laid off. And we were the most hardcore segment of CNN for investigative journalism and and they restructured it and we were laid off um, but after but I was given a severance and after I came forward the first time about the Bahrain situation my agent was called by uh, someone representing the executives at CNN and my agent was told that if I continued to talk my severance and health insurance would uh, would be pulled so there was there was a threat there to try to get me to that's a direct threat against your first amendment I, I tell you I think there's a civil issue there yeah, um, I, I think that, you know, they were trying to, and that would have worked for many people because they, they want that money. But at that time, uh, the second I got that phone call and really realized there was a big issue here. Obviously, if they're trying to get me not to talk, there's something they're worried about me exposing, something legitimate. And and I felt that that was now dirty money. Um, and, you know, it's it was, I, I was having trouble sleeping at night knowing that I had this information that the public needed to hear. And, and that really was the straw that broke the camel's back, Alex. And then I came forward with the Guardian articles, um, full fledged and, and continue to today. Are you aware of what I mentioned? It was 12 years ago, Washington Post, World Net Daily reported on it that CNN admittedly was basically at that time at least run by army psyops and that they would have generals. Gore Vidal famously talked about it in 2002. He said, wow, I'm here on the air. It was Larry King. He goes, there's no general standing off camera today. Uh, wow, this is, this is special. Are you aware of all that? 
Um, I, I'm not. We never had any uh, generals that I knew about that were working alongside us at, at CNN. But um, so, so I don't know anything about that connection. I, I never had anything like that exposed to me. Um, but, but I do know is uh, what I saw there in trying to get stories through that um, were kind of anti-U.S. government, and, and they were more difficult to get through on on the network. Definitely. Sure. Uh, did you know Anderson Cooper is CIA? Did you know that? Uh, I, I don't know anything all about right, that. We'll yeah. be right back, Amber. We're going to break all this down. And you're an investigator. Check into what I'm saying. Check into my claims. Don't just believe me. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? Amber Lyon is our guest, award-winning CNN reporter, three-time National Emmy award-winning journalist. Amber Lyon, live.com com is her website and so they still ever doing work for them but they say hey we're going to take away your health care we're going to take away all this stuff if you don't shut up okay because you know cnn's out there fighting for the little guy and let's bomb libya and syria because they're hurting people our al-qaeda is chopping people's heads off right now they're good guys but uh you know the uh and the evil protesters in Bahrain, well, so what if they got lined up and machine gunned? Let's get into what your reports were covering, the massacres that they don't want out. And then I want to get your take on, because I know you've talked about this, the war on journalists. I mean, even Pulitzer Prize winner, uh, who we've had on many times, Chris Hedges and his lawyer, who are fighting the NDAA, the Secret Arrest of Americans, they've pointed out they're going after whistleblowers, they're going after journalists who expose crimes. I mean, this is un precedented and instead of the media circling the wagons against this threat against the, the institution of the press well they're all paid off they think it's cute you know they're like hey shut up amber join the team <laughs> pretty fun to line up some women and shoot them in bahrain what's wrong with that what you're not sleeping good at night what's wrong i mean get tough you know get with the lie get with the program it's fun what's your take on that break that down yeah, I mean, I mean, it really was, uh, uh, I, I, I hate to be dramatic about this, but it was a, a horrific time for me in my career because I felt like I had a leash tightening around my neck and duct tape across my mouth because I knew these people were suffering and being gassed and, and, um, and killed and tortured journalists. We're talking doctors, these security forces that we are supporting here in the U.S. and giving tax dollars to stormed the main hospital in town and tortured patients and doctors. And, and I knew this was going on and it eventually became nearly impossible to get a story through uh, about Bahrain in the network. And, um, you know, I asked to return numerous times. They said they would send their, their other foreign correspondents to do it and, and thank you, but, but no thanks. Um, and not that Bahrain would have let me in anyway. I've tried to apply now for a visa many times and they won't let me return to the country. But, um, but we're giving our, our tax dollars and our nation is supporting Bahrain in part because we want that strategic naval base in a potential, if a potential conflict with Iran would escalate, um, Alex. So it was a horrific time for me. And uh, one of the first things I did when I was eventually laid off from CNN is apply for a visa to try to go back to the country to be able to uh, expose these people suffering. Um, Bahrain is really one of the most pure revolutions of the Arab Spring, but it's one of the most unco uh, undercovered by the media. And it is the most pure because almost 60 to 70 percent of the population, I mean, if you watch these videos on YouTube of their mass demonstrations through the streets, 60 to 70 percent of the civilians in Bahrain want this regime out. And um, and unfortunately, this regime's being s supported by the U.S. government and financed by the U.S. government in exchange for, for our naval base. Uh, and, and also, you know, if you if you continue to to watch the news, you, you're starting to see an escalation in the demonization of Iran on, on the major mainstream media networks. And not to say that Ahmadinejad isn't freaking nuts and he doesn't deserve to be talked about, but I, I find it odd that it, considering all the problems we're facing here in this nation, that the mainstream media can, is continually 
focusing on Iran and, and feeding us propaganda about Iran, Alex. And, and I have a, my gut is give, telling me that we are being propagated into a potential uh, another approving a potential another conflict this time instead of Iraq. It's it's with Iran. You're not with Al Qaeda, are you, Amber? I mean, you, you need to do whatever you're told. You're maybe with Al Qaeda. Maybe the TSA is going to have to take a little extra interest in you next time. Maybe we have to put you on a no-fly list. You know, you know, that's come out in the press that journalists and even members of Congress yeah. have been put on that list to teach them a little lesson. Yeah, there was a journalist at CNN, uh, Drew Griffin, who was put on that list as well when he investigated the TSA. So this is happening. You're not a conspiracy theorist. Um, Maybe you need to be taken to the private uh, room. <laughs> you know, I haven't had that happen to me yet, Alex, but I, I would welcome it because I sure in the hell would, would raise hell about it afterwards. And, and everyone should, um, especially journalists who are uh, being intimidated because they're, they're criticizing the TSA and, and the government. That's our job. Our job is to be watchdogs and publish what they don't want pu uh, published. Sounds yeah. like we've got an extremist on the line, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> These are her views and not mine. Whoa, yeah. whoa, extreme. The press should be questioning and be a watchdog. I'm scared right now. Now, now, seriously, let's talk about Obama, because I know you've been uh, you know, really uh, focusing on that. I mean, as a journalist, what is it like in... What's happening inside the highest levels of journalism that you've been in while he's been you know, really uh, purging journalists and trying to create a giant uh, chilling effect here? Okay, let's first I want to reinvigorate the public's definition of journalism. I think people think that journalism is what they're seeing on the news, and that's where reporters standing in front of the camera smiling, saying that the grass is green and the sky is blue. That's just reporting. Journalism is publishing something no one else wants to see. It's investigating. It's, it's not just saying whatever the government tells you. And that's true muckraking investigative journalism that we need to reinvigorate in, in our society. And so what Obama has done with his war on whistleblowers and by going after journalists with subpoenas as he has created a chilling effect, Alex, that we have never seen to, to the likes of this level in this country. And that's because Obama has, has prosecuted more journalists journalists and whistleblowers than any other president in our history under the 1917 Espionage Act, including Pulitzer Prize winning New York Times reporter James Risen. So when the networks see Obama going after journalists to try to get them to reveal their sources, that creates a chilling effect. Not only that, Obama has turned journalists into criminals. And I'm not an extremist, Alex. If you look at the logic here, as a journalist, my number one duty to my sources and to the public is to never reveal confidential sources. Well, now that Obama is subpoenaing journalists to reveal those sources and, and essentially saying that they're criminals for not doing so, he has criminalized the profession of journalism. Why society isn't raising hell about this and the mainstream media journalism outlets is, is beyond me. And I, I saw the direct effects, Alex, of, of Obama's actions um, at CNN. Uh, there were investigations uh, that I wasn't allowed to do because they were too high of a risk of being subpoenaed. And it really became, I'll, I'll break it down for you, it became like this. If I went to them with a story that had a really sensitive source, you know, a, a source who is potentially wanted by the federal government or the federal government doesn't like, well, that's pretty much everyone who is criticizing the federal government right now. Um, it would be a risk assessment. So what is the risk of Obama subpoenaing us for this information? Step one. Okay, let's evaluate that risk. Now, if you're subpoenaed, will you give up your source? No, I would always say I would never do that. Okay, so now if we're going to go through the story, are we willing to pay the legal fees if Obama subpoenas us for those sources? And, and sometimes the answer was no. And, and I think that's a situation and a chilling sure. effect that should be terrifying. Sure, sure. and the everyone. answer, I want your answer to this. The answer is the media universally sticks together for the First Amendment and journalistic integrity and goes after Obama and absolutely destroys the courts. We've got the power unless we give it up. And that's what happened with, 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 with the communists and Hitler and others. Yeah. If we let them subvert the press you know this is an award-winning journalist and, and somebody studied history if we do this this is how the tyranny happens this is one of the final moves the final red flags here that if we let the intimidation work of this mafia it's over it's and, and this, game over 
And this is why it's terrifying, Alex, and it should terrify everyone, because now anyone that the federal government says is an, a potential enemy, like the FBI did with Anonymous, it makes it nearly impossible for mainstream media reporters to, to cover those sources and talk to those sources. And it's created a chilling effect in the Obama administration and the FBI, CIA, NSA, they know this. And it's worked. And, and it's dangerous because now the government's allowed to call anyone an enemy and they know that the mainstream media will be very hard pressed to get in and talk to talk to these sources, especially I saw it happen directly with whistleblowers and the uh, anonymous movement. It was it was it became nearly impossible to talk to sources in that movement. And, and that's terrifying because well, now sure, sure, go ahead. Yeah, we're just now allowing the government to call them. Uh, to call anyone a terrorist and journalists won't won't be able to go and talk to them to find out whether they are or they aren't. We, we can't allow the government to choose our enemies. We need the truth to choose our enemies, Alex. Exactly. That's what the NDAA states is that a journalist like Chris Hedges or, or Amber Lyon or myself, I wear a commentator's hat, a researcher's hat, a journalist hat, a reporter's hat. We do it all here. I've got like now 10 reporters under me. And, you know, now we get Homeland Security documents and things that we've broken over the years. One was a huge story four years ago about saying returning veterans are the number one terror threat three and a half years ago. And we've got subsequent ones that I talked to my state police, FBI, federal marshal sources, and they now say, look, I can't talk to you anymore. They've let us know the NSA is listening to all of us. And now it's admitted the NSA spends most of its time spying on federal government and spying on themselves to make sure no one exposes the crimes going on. And so we don't get one tenth of the whistleblowing we used to get. Hey, I'm still ready. If I look at something and it's criminal clearly on its face or it's outrageous, look, people have a right and a duty to expose it. I mean, I mean, let's say the director of an agency is, has embezzled a million dollars. And there's cases of things like this. And then somebody tries to expose it. Well, we see it in the Pentagon. And then they go after the whistleblower. That's 100% protected. But now we can't have that because the people are scared. Well, the answer is we all stand up and say, you know what? We're not going to be afraid. And we all go public and let the chips fall where they may. And they can't get us all. They want to use little case points like Bradley Manning and burn him to scare everybody else. We have a right to know. And, and the future of this country stands or falls on what journalists and whistleblowers do now. And, and Alex, that's why I felt like it was so important to come forward because I'm trying to encourage other journalists to do the same. There, It's almost been, it's, I mean, really, I think I'm really uh, the most vocal journalist coming out uh, talking about CNN in CNN's history. And, and that's because Time Warner owns HBO, CNN, TBS, cable outlets, Time Magazine. And journalists are terrified to come forward and talk about what's going on because they feel they'll never be able to get a job in the business again. And, and I think it's time as journalists, we need to really step forward and focus on the elephant in the room here. And that's the propaganda and, and sometimes lies that the American public is uh, the poor trusting American public. You know, my family members living in, in the Midwest, um, they're, they're being lied to. And, and journalists, in the end, complacent journalists are killing journalism and they need to come forward and talk about this because they're on the wrong side of history. And, and unfortunately, you know, I, I feel like one day when this all is exposed, because the truth doesn't have a shelf life, when it is exposed, they're gonna be looked at as, as just as guilty as these corporations that they work for, Alex. Where do you see it going? I mean, if people don't stand up and say no to all this, where do you see things going in this country? Um, I, you know, I, I worked as an investigative reporter for the last 10 years. I covered the oil spill, I, um, you know, financial crisis. I can't tell you how many uh, soldier uh, goodbye ceremonies or funerals I, I went to. And, um, you know, I, I just see something, uh, I, I see that a lot of Americans are being taken advantage of and, and the truth isn't getting to them. And that's what bothers me the most as a journalist, Alex. Um, my job is to deliver the truth and it's, it's very difficult. And when the American public isn't informed and when they don't have that truth because they're not getting it from the mainstream media and from journalists, journalists aren't fighting for it like they used to, then that, that's dangerous. And, and we've already seen ha what happens. That, that's what gets us into Iraq and, and Afghanistan and now potentially uh, Iran. And, um, and, and I think that's something that should really 
uh, make us all realize that we need we need to wake up and really focus on what's happening. Because I, I I'm going to tell you my honest opinion because I've been able to see the truth so many times and the truth covered up so many times that we we are at a, at a scary place right now in in the U.S. and and I, I feel like it's my goal and and my job, my duty, my life is to try to bring this truth to to the people and. Um, and and I, I feel like that's the only way we can be empowered. We, we can't continue to allow the government to decide who our enemies should be. Um, you know, we, we, we need to let truth dictate that. Well, that's uh, right. We're a big, you know, powerful, rich empire that's been run into the ground. And we're like a vending machine that foreign governments and corporations put coins in. To, to get what they want out of the machine while we pay for it as citizens, while our name is destroyed worldwide, and we've got a dumbed-down population because this rotting of the media has been going on really 30, 40, 50 years, and now it's come to a point where even the mainstream media is collapsing in credibility, but they can't stop because now it's all they know is being prostitutes, as Gerald Salente uh, calls them, and then when a real journalist like yourself comes along, you're anathema, you're demonized, you're attacked, and we're going into this dark night. Now, I want to talk about more about your reports, more about what you've seen, uh, you know, being censored or controlled, more of what was really going on in Bahrain, um, because they don't want that information out here. Uh, but first off, here it is, a World Net Daily, uh, March 3rd, 2000, Army PsyOps at CNN. Uh, Counterpunch, CNN and PsyOps. Uh, here's another one, FAIR.org. Why were government propaganda experts working on news at CNN? Uh, CNN responds. Uh, CNN admits it. I haven't found the Washington Post yet, but I know I, I read it back in 2000. I had been told this before it even came out. But back then, they had generals and hundreds of PSYOPs at CNN Center in Atlanta actually at the editor level above the editors, commanding everything. And, and then that story kind of died out, so that's why I was asking you. I guess now oh, they just... You know, know what? Uh, I, I, I started at CNN in, in 2010, so if it was going on, um, it, it may have been happening before before I was with it. No, network. exactly. My point is, is exactly, uh, they've gone more underground with it now, is my point. Used to, as Gore Vidal said, the late Gore Vidal, they were standing there. Gore Vidal talked about this, too. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I, I wonder what, what's going on. I mean, my red flags are raised when you have this network not reporting on the domestic surveillance. Why aren't they out in Utah and Bluffdale right now reporting on the construction of this $2 billion NSA facility that would terrify most Americans if they knew that the NSA was planning on, on collecting that much data on your personal communications? Why aren't they out there covering Listen, that? Listen, they've got a giant one in San Antonio and they arrest the San Antonio Express News and the other paper people. They detain them and erase their film. We went with the lawsuit information that they lost a lawsuit in, in Maryland and they backed off. I haven't even aired that piece yet, but you're absolutely right. We went down there to try to get media to cover it. Yeah, I, I don't understand why they're not covering it. And I think every viewer of CNN needs to question that as well, because why wouldn't they cover something like this? This stuff is fascinating. I, I even had Alex this morning. I had a former CNN employee write me and said, thanks for coming forward. You know, I, I worked on the desk where we took all the phone calls from viewers. Amber Lyons, stay there. We're going to come back. Final segment with her straight ahead. This is amazing. For more than six years, I've talked on the air about creating a social network. PlanetInfoWars.com is in its beta phase. We're just launching it. And I want to invite all of you out there to be in on the ground level. Planet InfoWars is about people coming together, forming activist organizations, getting involved politically, hunting and fishing, gardening, dating. This is a place for people who love freedom to meet and to talk and to write and to post information. And I give you this pledge. We are not going to spy on you and sell your data to the New World Order. PlanetInfoWars.com is free, so people who love freedom can get together. Connect with people who are awake and know what we're facing. Be active. Organize. Take action. Go viral. Create. Contribute. Resist. Because resistance is victory. You are victory. It's waiting for you to breathe power into it. PlanetInfoWars.com I tell you, I would stand in line for this, to talk to somebody who's a real journalist who, you know, basically they ran her out of CNN and then threatened to take her 
health care and money and things away if she didn't shut up and she told him, you know what, I'm going to expose you. And she was telling me during the break an amazing story uh, that she was starting as we went to break. Uh, Amber Lyon, AmberLyonLive.com uh, is uh, her site. I hope to see her back in the media, but perhaps she's going to become the alternative media. I mean, that's the way to go. I mean, I started out myself that way because she's a passionate, smart lady. And we got to stand together or hang separate, as Benjamin Franklin said. Um, tell people this inside scoop on on your friend, uh, your, your CNN whistleblower, what they told you is happening at CNN. Yeah, so I, I've only had, I've had nothing but support from people internally at CNN because they are, they've been complaining about, about this while I was there. A lot of them just, you know, uh, Time Warner is a pretty intimidating enemy to have. So, so because they have families and for other reasons, they didn't come forward. But today I just got an email from someone who used to work, a woman who used to work on the desk where they would take calls from viewers directly. And she said that uh, during the time, I don't know if you remember in the press, there was all this press about SOPA and ACTA, uh, the, the internet censorship legislation, also about NDAA. And she said, quote, this is what she writes me today. She wrote editors and said, our viewers are really confused about this legislation and they really want to know more. And she says that her, her constant emails were ignored. And in the end, she writes, I remember wondering if I was crazy to think there was a deeper reason why CNN wouldn't cover such important subjects, the important subjects, in my opinion. So, I mean, that's someone who was on the front lines, the, the direct liaison with, with viewers. So, so we need to really ask ourselves if CNN isn't covering these topics, even though viewers want these topics covered in a time where CNN is losing viewers and ratings, then what the hell is going on here, Alex? Why aren't they covering these? Who is intimidating them or what's going on at that network that this stuff isn't being talked about? And when I come as an investigative reporter and try to expose a U.S. ally country that's horrifically abusing and torturing its people, why am I censored as well? What's going on here? I, I mean, it has CNN turned into state TV. And, um, and that's something we all need to ask ourselves or just keep in mind as you're watching so that you know to, that what you are seeing could potentially be propaganda and to go to other sources as well so that you have a complete uh, version, a complete plate of information to, to be able to try to figure out what the truth is from, Alex. Uh, you're right, and uh, CNN has become globalist TV, mega corporation TV. It's beyond state TV, but they want to masquerade that they're not, and they just give you different flavors. CNN supposedly neutral, MSNBC is, you know, liberal, but all they do is race bait, and then Fox is conservative. But in the final equation, they all are going in the same direction, uh, and they've tried to carve up and control the population, and now they're all pretty much going along with web censorship because the alternative media is giving them a run for their money. What do you think the system's going to do uh, to try to shut down their competition? Um, they're buying them up. Look at it. They've been bought. Anytime a blog gets huge, it, it gets bought up by AOL or Time Warner. Uh, look at Huffington Post. Look at Mashable. So anytime something gets to the level it can compete, it's bought out. Um, and, and I think that's what terrifies anyone about the media company I'm starting or, or your show, Alex, is because we won't sell out. I, I, I refuse. That was my next out. question. Where yeah. are you going now? Uh, you say you're starting a company. Yeah, I, I have no choice. Uh, I'm, I'm not a businesswoman, and, and frankly, that I prefer to be doing stories in journalism over business. But but I noticed one of the biggest issues and dilemmas facing journalists right now is that we have executives who have no journalistic experience but just want to make a profit uh, running these companies. So, so well, I'll tell you what, your first big assignment, you're doing it. Expose the <laughs> yeah. fake media. Expose the fake news. And uh, right there, you know, you, you bring them down. Alex Jones here with a message that could revolutionize health in this country. Going back about a year and a half ago, I began to learn about the incredible health effects of Longevity products. Aaron Dykes lost 92 pounds. We're going to show you some before and afters. Aaron, break down what happened, your story. I've worked really hard with diet and exercise to try to lose weight, but I just didn't get the results. It just didn't happen. Then I saw what you were doing with InfoWarsTeam.com. 
I wasn't even trying to lose weight, but I got it because I wanted to feel better energy. I wanted that nutrition. Didn't even understand how that could kickstart my own weight loss goals, but the products did that for me. I found myself suddenly losing weight, more energetic, wanting to exercise, wanting to eat the right foods. And they don't even advertise it as weight loss. I want to challenge our radio listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com, sign up as a distributor, and get wholesale pricing discounts at InfoWarsTeam.com. Mainstream television wants you to be a stupid slave. And somebody who doesn't, we got five more minutes with it, uh, is a three-time Emmy award-winning journalist. She worked uh, at uh, CNN the last three or four years and, and went to so many different danger zones, war zones, you name it. Uh, she's Amber Lyon, amberlyonlive.com. Uh, finish up the point about the company you're starting, and you were making a point there as we hit break, and then uh, any other points you'd like to make. Yeah, I mean, it's similar to what you're, you've been doing, Alex. We need journalists starting these companies so that the decisions are made based on the journalistic value, not based on whether or not it's going to generate a profit. And, uh, you know, so I, I'm working now, I've been taking business 101 classes and, and really getting my, uh, my business acumen improved. And, uh, and I'm working to start an, an independent media organization as well, uh, muckraker.com. We haven't launched yet. We're hoping to launch in early uh, 2013. But um, but that's that's become the reality of it. If we don't get more journalists in control of these papers and media outlets, then then you know, I, Lord knows what's going to happen to journalism. I mean, what we need is a giant spectrum of journalists with different perspectives because you know there's one truth, but there's different angles on it that can yeah. vary. But when hey, let's hype up massacres that are exaggerated or don't exist, and let's not call the bombing of Libya or Syria or, or, or arming of rebels. Let's not call that war, and then let's hype up you know other stuff that isn't happening. But then let's cover up murder in Bahrain. I mean, it's just, it, it, it shows the media, if they'll do that for Bahrain, they'll do that here, and that is what they're doing. Yeah, like I said, they're on the wrong side of history. I, I mean, the cover-up of the situation in Bahrain is is horrific, and, and every American should know that their tax dollars are going to gas and torture these pro-democracy activists. I, I mean, that is... It, it horrifies me knowing my money's going going to that cause. And, and and they're shaping the conversation, Alex. They're shaping it to whatever they want it to be, not to the truth. And that is so dangerous for this country, especially considering sure. the state we're in right now. And everyone should know, watch the news now. Watch how much they mention Iran. Considering everything we're facing here in the United States, including the fact that, you know, in a couple of weeks, I, I'm not going to have health insurance. A lot of my friends don't have jobs or health insurance. You know, my dad's been laid off. You know, the, the fact that we're dealing with so many issues economically and, and the fact that the mainstream media is going to focus on Ahmadinejad or, or what's happening in Iran. And well, in it's North classic. They're imploding the economy, giving tens yeah. of trillions to foreign banks. They're going to use the outside threat as the pretext to divert everybody. But uh, there's a perfect storm here because as the alternative media, you know, destroys the old line media because it won't do its job uh, and it. It forces them more and more into the hands of the governments and corporations that will pay them for infomercials and propaganda. And so it's going to be a race to the bottom. Uh, and it won't matter if they try to shut down the alternative media or buy it up. Because the same virus of disinformation and lies will destroy everything they touch. Yeah, and, and thank God for the internet and social media. That's the only thing making this censorship irrelevant. Uh, you know, it's... Um, it, I, there are so many times, even our, our documentary that CNN International didn't air and CNN never put on CNN.com, uh, some viewers who had watched it on CNN US taped it and then put it on YouTube. So it was at least able to be seen there. Um, but think about in the past when we didn't have that and this stuff just disappeared. Uh, it, it's, it's pretty scary. But, but luckily, uh, you know, I, I see the rise of so many independent outlets right now. And to, to fill that vacuum, Alex, and that's what's really giving me hope. Because well, I'm excited. Yeah. Amber Lyon, I'm excited about having you back uh, okay. as you get into more reports. Again, thank you so much for all the time today. Hey, thank you so much, Alex, for having me on. I, I appreciate it. it. It means a lot to me. Are you kidding? I appreciate you. Well, there she goes, Amber Lyon, amberlyonlive.com. Visit infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.